So now we're going to become begin to discuss the nesting option. If we click here or go to mode, and then go down to nesting. Our parts will highlight. Now, since we have one part in here, that whole part highlights. Now, this allows me to click on the object and drag it around. Okay. I also have the option down here to set specific positions for the object or the part. So if I want it, say, two inches up and two inches over, remembering that this corner of my material is always our zero point. That's important. No matter where I choose to position this part, that will always be my zero point. So if I set it over here and zero the machine out, the machine will move over to the left to cut out the part. Okay. So um, we can click and drag with the mouse. We can use our arrow keys to nudge the object specific distances. Okay. Now, how far this is moving every time I hit the key is basically dependent. If I click on zoom, I have grid options. That grid options are here. I can set the size of the grid and I can set the bump increment. And that is the distance I move. So if I want to be real precise, I can decrease the size of that. And now, when every time I move, I move a specific set amount. Okay. So, but if I want it to get back to zero, zero, all I have to do is type in zero down here, and zero down here, and hit enter. Now I'm right back at the zero position. Now I can change the angle of this two ways. I can use the less than or greater than symbols on the keyboard to rotate it. Basically, we currently have it set so it does it five degrees every time I hit it. Or I can type in a specific degree down here at the bottom right. Okay. Type in 90. Enter. It flips to 90. So That's the way you can position your parts relative to the plate. Okay. So now let's discuss <clears throat> some of the other options we have in the nesting mode. If I right click, I again, like in all the other modes, I get a menu with different options. Okay. So if you look at the top, we have copy and duplicate. These two may sound the same, but they are distinctly different. If I choose to copy this part, I now have a distinct separate part over here. Okay? So let me adjust these toolbars a little bit. If I generate an operation, and, and as you can see, down here my operations are grayed out. I can't generate an operation in the nesting mode. If I click back into the view tool pass mode, now I can make an operation. So as you can see, depending on which one I have highlighted or selected, that's the one that highlights. That's the one I'm able to work with. Okay? So these are two separate parts now, and both of these need their own operation in order to cut. Okay, So if I click back on the original wire mount here, and I go back into the nesting mode, now if I right click and I go duplicate, now I have the option, now I have a duplicate of the original wire mount. So let me click back into the view tool pass mode. Zoom out here a little bit. So now, if I click on the plus sign next to the wire mount, it shows my duplicate. 
if I create an operation for this original wire mount, say operation plasma cut, and I'll leave everything the way it is, click OK. Oops. I forgot to change my layer. I made a mistake. That layer is empty now. Okay, so I can't, obviously can't cut it out. So I have to go back to the default layer. Like I said, I, I created this part to cut layer in an earlier video when we were discussing the edit contours. I can't erase it, but I do have, it is empty currently. So let me fix that error, click OK. And now I have an option or operation here. And as you can see, this duplicate is cutting out the same way. It has the same operation on it. Okay. So basically, if I zoom out here, if I go ahead and edit start points and change the start point down here, it changed up here. So these two are linked. These two, however, are not. This is a separate copy. In order to cut that, I need to generate an operation for it on its own. Okay. So generally, I recommend that you duplicate. There's not that many times that you're going to want to be copying parts. You're generally going to be duplicating them, and you will set the original part up to cut out exactly the way you want and then each duplicate will cut out exactly the same so no matter how many uh, different layers I set up for this this main part here no matter how I, I change the start points it will cut the duplicates out exactly the same so that's um, the difference between a copy and a duplicate so let me undo and get back here. <clears throat> so we're back to the original. Okay. A couple different options here. Under the under the nesting mode. I gotta get back in the nesting mode. I right click. I have duplicate. That just sets a simple duplicate, one. Or I have multiple duplicate. And that means every time I click, it makes a duplicate for me. Okay. So when I'm done, I right click, I go cancel. Okay. So, so I can also draw a box around all three of these and choose to duplicate those. So, as you can see, this is a way that you can nest up your sheet. Um, you know, you can take a part, duplicate it, and then rotate it, and then um, generally uh, nest your part, your sheet up in kind of a rectangular fashion. Uh, so, so, that's the basics of working with the nesting option. So, one other option we have in nesting. As you can see, I have all these duplicates here. Okay. Oh, one thing I I neglected to mention was this mirror XY down here, the bottom right. Now, the mirror XY is not going to do a whole lot um, here. If I click down here, mirror X, as you can see, it just flips it to the other side. Okay. Now I can only do that with original parts, okay, or copies of parts. If I select my copy of the part, I have the ability to mirror it in the X or Y. I do not have that option if I select a duplicate, okay. If I try to mirror it, nothing happens doesn't allow me to do it okay so only the original part and copies of that part 
allow you to do to mirror okay so let me back up here and get back to the original and I'm gonna undo get back to my original part so one other option if I right click in the nesting mode is the array option so now I can go fit to material I can decide the array area but what I first have to do is set up my part spacing how far do I want in between my parts when it arrays them generally I find this is a pretty good distance a lot will depend on the material cutting and the kerf width of your nozzle you're working with so once I've set my part spacing if I go fit to material it's going to fit as many parts onto my t material as I can fit so it's going to give me eight columns and 14 rows so if I click OK that shows you what we're looking at here so if I zoom out we got a full sheet oops I didn't want to move that one I wanted to click into the view tool pass mode and drag the whole thing okay so we have a whole sheet nested up now let me undo that for a second and go back to the original okay so now let me uh, of course this is where changing the size of your material comes in if I go to options job options and let's say I don't have a um, material size set up so let's say I actually have a um, 24 inch by 24 inch piece of scrap that I'm actually going to be working with here so now when I go into nesting and go array fit the material it fills the whole sheet up with as many as it can now remember this arrays in a rectangular fashion it does not do what's called shape nesting where it will manipulate the parts to make them fit or whatnot this will simply place part, place part, place part, place part, and then create rows and columns of that part, and set them as close together as you set when you put in the, the part spacing. Okay. So, <clears throat> so that's creating a an array.